So uh, let me ask, you've read quite a few papers. You've uh, annotated quite a few papers. Let's talk about the process itself. How do you advise people read papers? Or maybe you want to broaden it beyond just papers, but just read concrete pieces of information to understand the insights that lay within. I would say for papers specifically, I would, I would bring back kind of what Louise was talking about is, is that it's important to keep in mind that papers are not optimized for ease of understanding. And so, right, they, there's all sorts of restrictions and size and format and, and, and language that they can use. And so it's important to keep that in mind. And so that if you're struggling to read a paper, doesn't that might not mean that the underlying material is actually that hard. And so, so that's definitely something that, that especially for us, that we, we, we read papers and most of the times we'll read papers that are completely outside of our, of our comfort zone, I guess. And, and, and so it'd be completely new areas to us. Um, so I always try to, to keep that in mind. So there's usually a certain kind of structure, like abstract introduction, mm -hmm. there's methodology, uh, depending on the community and so on. Is there something about the process of like, how to read it, whether you want to skim it to try to find the parts that are easy to understand or not, uh, reading it multiple times. Mm -hmm. is, is there any kind of hacks that you can comment on? I remember like Feynman had this, this kind of hack when he was reading papers where he would basically, um, he would I think I believe he would read the conclusion of the paper and we would try to just um, see if he would be able to figure out how to get to the conclusion in like a couple of minutes by himself. And um, and he would read pa a lot of papers that way. And I think F Fermi also did that almost. And, and Fermi was known for doing a lot of back of the envelope calculations. So he was a master at uh, doing that. Um, and, and in terms of like, uh, especially when, I, when reading a paper, I think a lot of times people might feel discouraged about the first time you read it, you, you know, it's very hard to grasp or you, you don't understand a, a huge fraction of the paper. And I think it's having read a lot of papers in my life, I think I've in peace with like the fact that you might spend hours where you're just reading a paper and jumping from paper to paper, reading citations and um, like your level of understanding of uh, sometimes of the paper is very close to 0%. And all, all of a sudden, you know, everything kind of, makes sense and 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 in your mind and then you know you have this quantum jump where all of a sudden you 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 understand the, the big picture of the paper and uh i i and and this is an exercise that i have to when reading papers and especially like more complex papers like okay you don't understand because you're just going through the process and just keep going and like and it it's, it might feel super chaotic especially if you're jumping from reference to reference you know you might end up with like 20 tabs open and you're reading a ton of other papers but it's just trusting that process that at the end like you'll find light um and i think for me that's a, a good framework when reading a paper it's hard because you know you might end up spending a lot of time and you it looks like you're lost but uh but that's the process to actually um you know understand what they're talking about in the paper yeah i think that process i enjoy i've found a lot of value in the process especially for things outside my field of reading a lot of related work sections and kind of uh -huh. go going down that path of getting a big context of the field because what's especially when they're well written there's opinions injected into the really related <laughs> work. Like what work is important, what is not. And if you read multiple related work sections that cite or don't cite each other, like the papers, uh, you, you get a sense of where the field, where the tensions of the field are, where the, where the field is striving. And that helps you put into context, like whether the work is radical, whether it's overselling it, Itself, whether it's underselling itself, all those things, uh, and on, added on top of that, I find that often the related work section is the most kind of accessible and readable part of a paper because it's kind of uh, it's brief to the point. It's trying like summarizing. It's almost like a Wikipedia style article, 
the introduction is supposed to be a compelling story or, or whatever, but it's often like overselling. There, there's like an agenda in mm -hmm. the introduction. <laughs> the related work usually has the least amount of agenda except for the few like elements where you're trying to uh, talk shit about previous work where you're trying to sell that you're doing much better. But other, other than that, when you're just painting where the, where the field uh, came from or where the field stands, it's really valuable. And also, again, just to agree with Fine and the conclusion, but it's like, I get a lot of value from the breadth first search, kind of read mm -hmm. the conclusion, then read the related work and then uh, go through the references in the related work, mm -hmm. read the conclusion, read the related work, and just go down the tree un until you like hit dead ends or run out of coffee. And then through that <laughs> process, you go back up the tree and now you can see the results in their proper uh, in their proper context. Unless of course the paper is truly revolutionary, which even that process will help you understand that is in fact uh, truly uh, revolutionary.